All right, welcome to part three of the home workouts. If you're in isolation or lockdown or simply in the weekends at home and not going to the gym, here's the third workout in our series. Now, today I'm gonna to be using little balls like this. We've got a myriad of things. We've got kettlebells, steps, Swiss balls, power bands, mini loop bands, and even an ab roller. So quite a few things. So if you don't have this stuff at home, you might have to make do with some other types of equipment. But let's get it with number one. The first one I'm gonna do is a scat press. Now I find that this workout that I do, the third one, is more of a stability bias. Both stability for the lower leg and stability for the upper body and of course, lower back stability. So call it a stability bias if you like. But the first one is working on your shoulder stability. So isometric work in the shoulder joint and dynamic work in the scapula. So when you're warming up for say shoulder day or any sort of upper body day, I like doing this one, especially for people with shoulder rehab or they're going through post-surgical issues where you do a one arm scapula press on the wobbly ball. Now this can just be a Pilates ball, or a little beach ball, maybe a little kid's ball, something that's a little bit soft that you can put your hand on and then get your body weight over. And once you're in that position, you've got to keep your elbow straight, take that other hand away, and you're going to work on going into scapular retraction. So your body goes down and then pressing away from the floor into scapular protraction. Now you'll notice that I'm wobbling quite a bit because it's really hard neurally to stay stable on this ball because hey, the surface is wobbly, so it's unstable, which is going to create that stability component the strengthening component through the shoulder, and it's a really nice way to warm up before any other sort of type of pressing work. And today I'm doing overhead shoulder press, so I need to make sure that I'm all fired up through my rotator cuff, and I'm making sure my scapula is nicely, or my serratus is nicely switched on. Now that's quite a hard one. Some of you people with tight wrists might struggle with that, but it's really good for weak wrists as well. So if you've got a tight wrist, you might want to stretch that out before you start doing that sort of thing. So that's number one. Okay, number two is a bent over row. Now I'm doing this for my core stability because I'm had a history of being quite hyperlodotic. Now, for me, doing a deadlift really helps, but I want to make sure that I'm also stable in those segments and that movement. So something like a bent over row, which traditionally you do for upper body, for rowing, right? I also use it with a band for actual stability for my back. So you get that endurance of being able to hold yourself in a hip hinge position. And that's quite important for people who you know, I've had old back pain problems, maybe you're like me, you've had an old lordotic problem, we had a really weak core and a really stiff lower back and all you use is your lower back. The ability to try and keep yourself in this hip hinge position with the load, especially when the load increases and then decreases, okay? So with the dumbbells, if you like, why I use the band is the dumbbells is for upper body because the load is the same all the way through, okay? So if you're training for upper body, doing a row stuff in a bent over position, dumbbells. But if you're training for lower back endurance, so the ability to hold yourself in that position, and then you want the weight that's already there to increase so you work harder in your abdominals and then decrease. So there's a rep. So it's hard on and then off again and you're trying to work on making sure your back doesn't round and doesn't extend it's got to stay in neutral and that's the hard part can you keep your core really switched on so right through your abdominals here to look after that lower back and give it support while i work here now i can feel that more in my abdominals than i can in my lower back and that's what you want you don't want your back lower back screaming you want, you want your abdominals working harder to look after your back. So I like that one to give me that endurance so when I'm lifting and I'm squatting, it's nice and stable in there. Okay, third one, we're gonna keep on that focus of core. I like doing, sometimes doing two cores in a row, but this ball rollout one is also for my shoulder because I'm trying to work on shoulder strength up there, okay? Now, especially when you're swimming and you're going forward, you need the strength right up at that top point there to pull through. So. I like doing these ball rollouts, which is keeping your spine neutral, right? Leaning on the ball and then slowly rolling that out. Now, as you go, you've got to tilt your pelvis a bit to keep neutral, keep your glutes on, keep your core on, and then roll as far as you can at that point there. Now, that's going to put a lot of demand through the back of the shoulder here or the underneath of the shoulder, if you like, which is going to use a lot of lats. 
pretty good for swimmers, but also good for that confidence overhead. It gives you the range, gives you the strength up here so when you're pressing. So if anything, this one is a half a core exercise. It's also half a shoulder prep exercise. So it's prepping me for pressing overhead. It might be good for me doing this before a swim day, or an ocean swim, or for a pool swim. If you're a triathlete, doing this sort of stuff to prime your shoulders, ready for that sort of pull mover. Now, if you find that's not enough for your core, okay, so you're doing great for your shoulders, but you want a little bit more for your core, but your shoulders are not up to speed to do a full ab wheel. So you find you get out to here, and you go, oh, my shoulders can't handle it, but your core can. What I suggest you do, and this is just maybe an alternative, maybe you don't have a Swiss ball home, maybe you've got one of these, is put the ab wheel with a band. Can be any sort of band. This band just needs to be relative to how strong you are. So it's got to be able to pull you back. Now, the interesting thing about this is you might think this is cheating. In a way it is. It's cheating for your core, but it allows you to get your full range down to the floor and then get pulled back. Because if you don't have the strength out the end there, there's no way you're going to come back and you're going to strain something. The interesting thing though is, when I'm pushing out, I'm actually pushing against resistance. So I'm using shoulder to push out and a bit of lower body, and then I need to come back. So it's still hard for me because there's a massive resistance there that I've got to push against, and then I can come back. I'm still trying to bias the work here and the work there rather than relying on the band. So you don't want to snap it back, you want to slowly go back with it. So that's a little alternative. All right, next one's your leg workout. Now, old favorite of mine, one leg ball squat. When you're past the rehab stage, you need to do some strengthening work at home. Now it's too hard to hold weights with this exercise. So you want to do a single leg stability exercise with load, you use a band. Now, interesting thing about this one, just a couple of notes. The band, this is just a medium power band, it's not too hard. What you're trying to work on is making sure that you're still pushing your knee into the ball. It is actually harder to push your knee in the ball when you've got so much load going down through here. But I need that load for that single leg strengthening. So when I do a one leg squat with the ball like that, you're going to try and go as deep as you can go. If you've got no knee trouble, let that knee go forward. And again, trying to keep focused on pushing that knee there. Because otherwise, if you don't have that ball, you're not doing any glute med work. I'm all here is max hamstring quads. Okay, so glute max, hammies, quads, loading it up. But if I push my knee into the ball, I get that crucial glute med work, that external rotation work as well. So deep in that hip, I'm getting some burn in there, and that is what I need for running. Okay, it's the sort of thing that is often forgotten, especially with squats. You don't get that single leg glute med work and it's missed out and those runners need it so much so for me doing a triathlon this is really really important okay so next one is your oscillations now often forgotten really good for sport really good for end range shoulder work and again it's that stability component that stability bias we're doing today now traditionally external rotation 45 degrees nice and slow if you're rehabbing but i'm at that stage where i want to be doing oscillation work so really quick fast movements not too much load because you don't want too much fatigue but you're aiming to get about 30, 40 degrees from there to there, like 30, 40 degrees like that. Movement, but you're trying to keep the elbow in one position. Now I'm down on what they call a 45 degree angle. It's not too hard, but it fatigues pretty quick. Now I'd get your rep range up to about 30 or 40 if you can. You won't need to go to 60 because you'll get some fatigue there. So have the band strong enough that you're fatiguing about 30 or 40 reps, not 60, it's too easy, okay? But the biggest focus is keeping that elbow, like if you look at me, I'm not 90, I'm actually down at 45. Now when I'm down at 45, face the band at 45, and then work on that movement like that. And you just gotta look at your elbow and try and keep that as still as possible, and you go as fast as possible. Okay, so it's really, really good work for them. And then just flip around, do it the other way. I'll show you on this hand. So you do external, then internal on one side, and then flip around to the other. When you're doing internal, you might have to have that band a little bit tighter or just step away a little bit more. Same drill, 45 degrees down, 45 degrees that gets that way, and then work on this movement here. 
and it's just the mid-range, okay? You can play around with it, you can start working on outer range, inner range, inner range is really easy, but mid-range to start with, and just get your rep range up, and just get used to the control. This is about how good can you coordinate your shoulder joint so your elbow stops doing this, all right? That's a really nice one. Won't be too much fatigue, but it's a nice interim midway through your workout. Okay, the thing you'll notice about these workouts is I'm sort of going from upper body to lower body to core, and I'm mixing it around a little bit. That gives me enough time, especially when you're doing single leg work, um, to drop that fatigue. If you're getting too much fatigue and you're doing too many leg things in a row, it can muck you up a little bit. So this is, you know, you're doing a workout of eight exercises, it's nice to mix it around a bit. So now we're into our side plank clams. Now the reason I'm doing a clam with a side plank, I'm saving time. I'm past the doing, needing to do clams by themselves. If I can do a side plank for my core stability and I can add on a clam for my hip strength, then I've got two and one, all right? Crucial things about the side plank, stay on your knees, okay? Don't worry about the feet because you've got to do a clam, but make sure you look after your shoulder, especially if you've got a weak shoulder, meaning grab the back of the shoulder, pull the shoulder back so you're using your lat underneath. That's your post for the shoulder. So it's nice and solid to lean on. It's not gonna pop out like that. So pull it down, Make sure that's set up well. Core on, and when you, before you lift, roll into your squat, and then hinge forward into a full bridge hip hinge on your side. That's your side plank. So from here, you then jam your heels together. Push through your heels, squeeze the buttocks to open the knees. Don't think about lifting your knees or stretching the band, just squeeze your buttocks, because that keeps you also in the hip hinge. Some people, Start doing this and they start slipping and going further and further back. You keep into that full bridge and work on maximal squeeze there. Now, don't overcook it. Get 10 done and you might think, oh, I'm not fatigued yet. But remember, you're using both glutes when you do that. So when you get to the other side, you're already pre-fatigued. And then you're doing this again. So it's almost like you're doing two sets back to back. Obviously, there's a bias on one side. But I can feel this just as much in my left because that's doing static work my right and that's doing the dynamic work and that's where you'll feel fatigue when you get to sort of 10 on that side you go oh okay i've had done enough so just don't overcook with the reps also don't overcook with the band the band doesn't need to be heavy because you're doing a side plank to be honest you're just adding on a little bit of this okay as mentioned i was going to do shoulder press today now i'm doing shoulder press with an eight kilo kettlebell bottoms up so meaning you're going to have it upside down which increases the difficulty for the shoulder. I'm also adding on a band here. So what it allows me to do is have more stability load and options in the shoulder without the vertical load of the bell. So instead of doing you know, a 12 or 16 kilo bell, I've got a band on the lateral, which gives me way more stability options than just pushing weights. So this one here, bottoms up, makes it wobbly, okay? So rather than having it that way, bottoms down, that's nice and stable, have it up and then You've really got to try and work on making sure your core's okay. Get your arm out that 45 degree angle and press the ceiling. Try and aim to have, when you reach the top, you almost like your bicep touches your ear. Okay, so you get that bell vertically over your shoulder and then down in front. So vertically there, down in front. And this is really good for those people who may have a little bit of impingement when they're trying to do vertical. The other thing about vertical is it's going to hit you in the face. So have it in front, into there, because this part is giving me my lateral rotator cuff work. So all my muscles at the back of the joint here are working really hard, not just my deltoid, okay? So that's a really nice option for those people out of that end stage rehab. Maybe they need to work on a bit more shoulder speed. Maybe you want to spice it up a bit. When you're doing shoulder press, put a band on, see how that feels. All right, last one's back to legs again, second old favorite of mine. Really, really good to try and get your quads and your knee stability going on a single leg. Again, good for runners, good for cyclists, good for anyone that's had patellofemoral pain or knee surgery or weakness in the knee and at that point where they're trying to add load to a single leg exercise. So this you'll find has more stability components than the one leg ball squat does. But at this point, because I can handle the stability component, I'm adding on more load and still challenging myself. So this one, again, this is great. If you don't have really heavy dumbbells, then a band and the dumbbells on a single leg squat, step down is the go. So 
into there on the same shoulder as the same leg, trying to work on keeping upright as much as you can when you go into the squat. Your first few will be a bit wobbly. Once you get to that neural pathways going and you've got to really concentrate on what your knee's doing, making sure a little bit of wobble's okay because that's what it's all about. You're trying to challenge your body to maintain a stable knee under a single leg squat with load. Okay, so you're trying to go down and forward and back. It's almost like a reverse lunge, the step down, but I'm really not trying to put any weight through the back leg. I'm trying to keep that a tap so all the force stays on the front leg and I get the fatigue in there and the conditioning without it resting. It's great exercise. Give those eight a crack. See you next time.